Hello, welcome to another video from the events calendar. My name is James and today we are going to be talking about a feature of the events calendar called event aggregator. Now event aggregator in its most basic form is included with the events calendar. Uh, we do have a paid version of event aggregator that has several more options and we're going to look at both the free version and the paid version today. Um, but basically what event aggregator does is it allows you to import events into your WordPress website. So let's go ahead and take a look at the free version and what we can do with that. And then we'll take a look at the paid version and what we can do with that one. Okay, so I have here a fresh install of WordPress. And the only thing that I've installed on in this is the free version of the events calendar. And like I said before, the events calendar has the event aggregator built in, um, a free version of it anyways. And we're gonna take a look at that real quick. And then we will add the pro version and take a look at that. So. In order to get to the event aggregator section, we just need to go to events import. And right here you'll see import origin and there's a drop down menu. And the only option we have right now is a CSV file. And like I said, we do have a paid version. And if you have the paid version, you have all these other options. You can import events from Eventbrite, uh, Meetup, a Google Calendar. And so we're gonna look at that here in a minute. But first we'll look at what comes with the free version, which is just importing a CSV file. Now we do have an article in our knowledge base about event aggregator and there's an article about csv files and there's an example uh, actually several different sample csv files that you can download and use when you're building your own csv file but basically the idea is that you have some events somewhere else on some other platform maybe it's wordpress maybe it's not and there's some way to export those events into a csv file and then you can take that csv file and you might have to modify a little bit to make sure it matches with how our system works here, uh, which is the point of those example CSV files. And then you can import that CSV file into your website here, and it will actually import all those events into your website. So obviously the easiest way would be exporting from another WordPress website using the events calendar and importing into another website using the events calendar, but it doesn't have to be that way. Really all you gotta do is make sure that your columns in your CSV file match what we're looking for and the import should work uh, pretty well. So there'll be a link in the description of this video to those knowledge base articles that I mentioned that will walk you through um, event aggregator and will show you some example CSV files that you can use. But speaking of example CSV files, I'm going to go ahead and import one. So I'll select CSV file. You can go give this a name, doesn't really matter what you call it. Call it test import. Um, and I'm going to be importing events. You can import organizers and venues separately, but I'm going to go ahead and do events. We'll click upload and I have the file right here and I'll move my face out of the way. And first we'll do the preview and this will kind of show us some of the events that are in that CSV file and the data that's going to come in. So there's a column called event name and we're going to be making that the event name. All of these should match up pretty well. If they don't exactly, that's okay. Maybe you have a column that, you know, maybe the column says name of event. Well, you can choose that column for this because it's the same thing, right? These words don't necessarily have to be exactly the same. Do whatever makes sense, but it, it's easiest if you do make the columns, go ahead and match what we're looking for in that example CSV file. So we can keep scrolling here and we'll see all day event we'll see if there's a uh yep all day event right there time zone is there is there a time yep event time zone so here's an example where it doesn't exactly match this says time zone this says event time zone so you might have to go through some of these and um and select them from the drop down they might not all automatically get selected like these here um so we'll keep scrolling down the line here hide from event listings we'll see if there's an option for that yep hide event from event listings sticky and month view those are already filled in event featured image do we have that in here feature event here it is event featured image event website Let's see here allow comments yep and allow trackbacks and pingbacks there it is so now we've got all of our columns that that the app is looking for matched with the columns that exist in our csv file and I'll scroll down here and you can choose if you want all these events to be published right away, or maybe you want them all to be draft and you'll choose when to publish them later. And um, they, they might have categories associated with them, but if you want to give all these events an additional category, uh, you can go ahead and select from, from the list here if you have some event categories. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and click import all four. Because there's just four events in this import. And we'll have a progress bar up here and looks like it's done. Let's go ahead and go to events. And there they are. There's actually 10 events in there, sorry. Um, there are four different categories, but 10 events in total. And you can see they all got imported. Some of them have different categories here. All the information, start date, end date came through. And so if we were to go look at our calendar, of course, we should see some events here. So that was a pretty ideal example because it was our own um, example CSV file that we used. But like I said, as long as you go through your CSV file and make sure the columns match what we're looking for, you should be fine. You should be able to import events from pretty much any anything. Um, you could even just sit there and create your own CSV file from scratch, you know, if, if you prefer creating a bunch of events that way. So that is basically all that's included with the free version of Events Aggregator. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to another example website where I have the pro version and uh, we're going to take a look at importing something from uh, meetup.com and see how that works. So let's go ahead and switch over to that other website. Okay, so uh, here's a fresh website. And the first thing you'll need to do, of course, is go to the eventscounter.com and purchase a events aggregator license. And then with events aggregator, we don't give you a separate plugin to install like some of our other things like uh, filter bar or event tickets. Those are those are separate plugins that you need to install. With Event Aggregator, all you need to do is grab your license key from your account. After you've purchased, you can click on the Downloads and Licenses button and find your license key. And then in your website, all you have to do is come over here to Events, Settings, and go to the Licenses tab. And then you can paste it right in here and click Save. Once you do that, then that will unlock all the pro features of Event Aggregator. Um, no need to install any extra plugins or anything. So now I'm going to switch over to a website where I've already done that. And we're going to go ahead and import from meetup.com. That was one of the options um, that is that is only pro and we weren't able to do with the free version earlier. So we're going to go to events import just like we did before. But we're going to notice that we have a lot more options here. All these options have been unlocked for us. So I'm going to click on meetup and Again, we can give it a name. I'm just going to call it Meetup Import. And first thing we got to do is log into Meetup. So we'll click the button. And it was a little easier because I was already logged into Meetup in my browser. If you're not logged in, it'll just have you put in you know, your username and password. And then it'll bring you back here and we'll choose Meetup again. I suppose I didn't have to type this in before. I'll do it again. Meetup Import. And now we can go ahead and choose one time or scheduled. So scheduled is kind of cool. If there's, you know, if you know you're going to be adding events regularly to Meetup, then you could do a scheduled import and your website will reach out to Meetup every, whatever you choose, um, day, week, month, and check for new events. And if there's new events, it'll import them. So then you only have to manage one calendar. You can just add events to Meetup and you know that they'll automatically be added to your website. Um, today, I'm just going to do a one-time import, and now I'm going to go and find that link, and I'm just going to paste it right in here, and we'll click Preview just like before. Okay, it's brought in some events. You can see right here, I'm just going to say Import All. I'm not going to give it an additional category or anything, and I'm going to go ahead and just automatically publish them right away. Okay, we got a little progress bar here. It's only four events, so it really shouldn't take all that long. And if we go ahead and view our calendar, you can see we have some events here. Paradigm shifts to lead to healthy connections, change dynamics to your relationship. You can see we have a history of imports that we can check out right there, green check mark. Got some events. So everything worked beautifully. And this is just a one time import, um, so it's done. Uh, but if you chose scheduled import, then it'll automatically basically do the same process again, you know, at whatever frequency that you chose. Um, so you can see how how very quick and easy that was. You know, we didn't have to go through and recreate all these events one by one that we already took the time to put in Meetup, right? We we already put them in Meetup, and then we come here, click a couple buttons, and and they all show up here on our website. So really cool feature, and you can do this with Eventbrite. Um, you can import things from a Google Calendar. Um, there's even an other URL option, which, you know, if we're being honest, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, there's so many different types of 
uh, events uh, websites out there and they all do things a little bit differently. And so when using the other URL option, you know, don't get your hopes too high. But if you're doing Meetup or Eventbrite or Google, you know, we specifically created this plugin to work with those apps. So those should go pretty smoothly for you. And as always, if they don't, please feel free to reach out and we will do our best to help you out with that. But that's pretty much it for Event Aggregator. I'm not going to go through all the different options um, because they're all basically the same. Eventbrite, you click a button to log into Eventbrite, paste in the link, and it imports the events. It's all pretty straightforward. Again, there will be links in the description to those articles if you prefer kind of a, a walkthrough to read uh, versus watching a video. Um, those will be available to you. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.